Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all of our students. So today I will be giving you a briefing uh, on our next practical diseases of respiratory systems. So before we go to the pathology aspect of the respiratory uh, tract diseases, <clears throat> first of all, we need to understand and uh, be familiar with the normal anatomy and histology of our respiratory tract. So as uh, you all know, our respiratory tract usually starts with the nasal cavity and oral cavity, which expand distally to the terminal bronchiole, uh, which uh, located in the uh, lung parenchyma. So, <clears throat> so our, uh, our nasal cavity, when we take a biopsy of a normal uh, person, uh, this is the tissue usually you can see so the nasal cavity usually lined by this uh, respiratory tract epithelium it is a columnar epithelium uh, with cilia so this, this is uh, what differentiate uh, this epithelium with the other columnar epithelium such as the gastric uh, gastro uh, digestive tract uh, epithelium so beneath the respiratory type epithelium you have this uh, mucus gland. So this mucus gland usually have this uh, goblet cells. Uh, this is the goblet cells which differentiate to another type of gland uh, which uh, usually uh, which are serous gland. Uh, as you can see these are the serous gland. The serous gland usually is darker color uh, and does not have goblet cells uh, and does not uh, hence it does not secrete, secrete mucus. So beneath that, uh, in the stroma also, you have this vascular spaces uh, which represent the vascular supply for the tissue. So in the uh, nasopharynx, uh, it is a difference with the normal nasal mucosa where you have this respiratory uh, epithelial lining. Uh, beneath that, you have uh, this uh, somehow lymphoid tissue. It, it does look like a lymph node but usually the, it differ from the lymph node because it is lined by respiratory epithelium. <clears throat> Otherwise, it has this uh, rich uh, lymphoid tissue which uh, are similar uh, histologically with the normal uh, lymph, uh, reactive lymph nodes. So, uh, when we go down to the larynx, uh, in the external uh, anatomy, you can have this, uh, you, it, it is divided into supraglottis, glottis, subglottis, and trachea. So in the supraglottis, uh, this is how it looks like. Uh, here in supraglottis, it is, consists of this false cord, which is lined by respiratory type epithelium. Uh, then you have this <clears throat> ventricles. Ventricles is the uh, the hollow uh, spaces uh, uh, within the false and true cord. And then you have this true cord, which uh, is lined by squamous epithelium. And then uh, beneath that, you have this uh, vocalis ligament and, uh, and the muscles. And then uh, within the... Uh, with supraglottic area, you have this area which is rich in uh, serous gland. So this is uh, how the normal histology of the larynx looks like. As we go uh, distally, uh, you have this uh, bronchus. Uh, bronchus is usually this area uh, where you have this uh, uh, the initial part of the uh, <clears throat> the respiratory tract before going into the lung parenchyma, then uh, it is differs with the bronchial because it is uh, larger and usually you have this uh, cartilage uh, just uh, adjacent to the uh, respiratory epithelium here and then you have this uh, smooth muscle here and of course uh, you also have this uh, <clears throat> some lymphocytes also sometimes uh, in between and then this is the uh, alveoli spaces and then you have this uh, bronchiole bronchiole is located uh, distally and uh, it's uh, almost similar as bronchus but 
usually uh, in bronchial you don't have this cartilage and usually you have this adjacent uh, vascular supply lah. Uh, this is the uh, artery <coughs> which is adjacent to the bronchial and then of course you have this uh, air spaces okay so after we learn the normal histology briefly because i i i think uh, I, I i i think we do not have a longer time to explain to all the different types of histology of this <coughs> respiratory tract uh, so i just uh, i just explain those who are prone to have illness uh, or diseases uh, in between so that uh, we can uh, make sense of what we learn if we learn the pathological aspect so we know which one is normal which one is abnormal so our first case is a 46 year old man he is a chronic smoker and presented with chronic cough so <clears throat> basically uh, in this patient uh, when we take a biopsy you will notice uh, it has an enlargement of the large uh, air spaces large uh, the alveoli spaces is large it's enlarged and usually this enlargement is distal to terminal bronchial bronchial so this is the terminal bronchial so it is distally the enlargement is distal distal to this terminal bronchial so you have this uh, large air spaces as you can see in the previous uh, normal histology usually air spaces is uh, it's quite small. It's like a, it's uh, it's like a network, but it's small. Uh, but this one is uh, very much enlarged. Uh, here it's like uh, it's like the <clears throat> the thing is filled with some air. So it's uh, very much enlarged. So th this is uh, what uh, usually occur in and uh, lung of patient with emphysema. So this is emphysema is actually uh, one <coughs> clinical uh, pathology of the under uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So our next case, uh, we have this uh, 12, 12 year old boy presented with cough associated with high grade fever. So uh, if we take this biopsy in uh, in this patient, uh, you can see it is a uniform intra-alveoli uh, neutrophilic infiltrates. So you can see uh, the alveolar spaces is not distended, it's not enlarged like the previously. It's basically a bit distended but not as distended as the emphysema just now. But it is filled with these uh, neutrophils and some of the neutrophils actually clumping together like in this area clumping together clumping together forming some sort of uh, micro abscesses as we go to the different area of course uh, again you can see uh, the alveolar spaces is distended uh, with all these neutrophils forming micro abscesses and of course you can see in this bluish area here it is actually a bacterial colony uh, so these are the <clears throat> typical features of this uh, early phase of these diseases as the disease gets worsened uh, sometimes some of the patient progress uh, to this stage where uh, it's worsening of the clinical <clears throat> of the clinical uh, presentation so, and usually if this happen usually patient will uh, be admitted to the ICU so where in this patient you have this highline high line membrane formation highline membrane formation you can see this pinkish uh, membrane formation uh, on top of the alveolar alveoli spaces alveolar lining then <clears throat> this actually signifies early stage of acute uh, respiratory distress syndrome so acute respiratory distress syndrome is actually uh, emergency medical condition where you have uh, uh, decompensation of your <clears throat> your oxygenation to the lung tissue and also leads to hypoxia to all over our body so this uh, the the uh, progressive stage of the disease and 
if let's say the patient uh, healed or underwent healing process, usually the neutrophils will get faded. Faded. Uh, there's not not much of neutrophil after that, and then it will be uh, the next uh, <coughs> uh, white blood cell, which is predominantly lymphocytes. Uh, these are the lymphocytes. Sometimes you can also see some uh, macrophages like this area you can see some macrophages uh, these are the <clears throat> uh, the inflammatory cells uh, in the healing pro healing uh, stages and then uh, usually after that uh, there will this uh, uh, this all this uh, immune response will leads to this formation of the fibromyxoid mass uh, so this fibromyxoid, fibromyxoid mass usually is composed of this, like this uh, macrophages here, and uh, also fibroblasts. It looks like a swirling around like this. So it we we call it fibroblastic plaque. So this is the stages where it is organizing. So <clears throat> the diagnosis it is a loba pneumonia, where you have this. Uh, range of cases, uh, range of uh, timeline. First off, we start off with the acute stages where you have this distended uh, alveolar spaces with uh, neutrophilic infiltrates forming some micro abscesses. Sometimes you have these bacterial colonies uh, in between the uh, micro abscesses. Then after that, a patient sometimes get worsened uh, with highline membrane formation, which is signify early uh, ARDS, and then you have this uh, formation of fibroblastic plaque. This is uh, signifies organizing pneumonia. So this is uh, the stages of uh, low bar pneumonia. So the next case, we have this a two-year-old girl presented with high-grade fever associated with cough. Again, uh, you can see in here, you have this patchy intra-alveoli uh, fibri no purulent exudate uh, which has also neutrophil here you can see the uh, it has this fibrin uh, exudates together with the neutrophils but not all of the alveolar spaces affected it differs from the loba pneumonia you can see just now where all the alveolar spaces has infiltrated by this neutrophil but some in this case you have some of the alveolar spaces uh, does not have any neutrophilic infiltration. And of course, in this area, you have this uh, intra-alveoli fluid accumulation where you can have this pinkish fluid, uh, which is the secretion due to this uh, infections uh, undergo, underwent this. Because in infection, of course, you have these <coughs> stages where you have this, uh, sometimes you have this uh, acute fluid accumulation uh, due to the degradation of the uh, the bacteria product and also uh, in this you can see this is a <clears throat> this is a signs of uh, this is a classic histology of bronchopneumonia with pulmonary edema because uh, why we say it is bronchopneumonia because not all a spaces is infiltrated and of course uh, why we say it's pulmonary edema also because it has this intra-alveolar fluid accumulation. Uh, you can see in the slides <coughs> also later on. Okay, so our next case is a 23-year-old 20, woman presented with chronic headache and rhinorrhea. Uh, this is actually quite common. Uh, okay, so uh, when we look, uh, when we examine uh, the nasal area, you can have this... Uh, polypoidal uh, structure. When we remove, uh, usually our ENT colleague will remove the uh, the polyp and send uh, to uh, our HPE. So this is how the HPE of this uh, polyp looks like. So of course, uh, because it is the nasal area, so you have this uh, lining epithelium. It is a polypoidal. Polypoidal is like a polyp, uh, polyp shape. It has a stalk here. So it is a polypoidal like here and it's lined by this benign respiratory tract epithelium and beneath the uh, epithelium you have this stroma which is 
edematous and has this rich uh, vascular small ves uh, rich small vessels in between and you can see there is a lot of uh, inflammatory cells uh, within the stroma but uh, the inflammatory cells interestingly it has this uh, mixture of the inflammatory cell where you have these neutrophils you have eosinophils and also you have lymphocytes but usually uh, the characteristic is uh, you have a lot of neutrophils and eosinophils with edematous stroma and multiple small capillaries and the lining epithelium is a respiratory type epithelium respiratory type epithelium so this is a uh, classical uh, features of inflammatory nasal polyp okay moving on to our <clears throat> next case you have this 60 year old man presented with epistaxis okay so usually when we uh, if we do examination usually our ent colleague will do examination you have this mass at the nasopharynx and when we when they took a biopsy of the the mass you can see the mass actually is <clears throat> composed of a tumor arranged in a syncytial pattern why i say it's tumor because the normal architecture of the cell is no longer preserved you don't have any more the proper lining and you don't have any more the stroma uh, and the vascular spaces arranged properly in between you have this all of these masses are composed of these uh, cells which usually arranged in syncytial pattern what is syncytial pattern syncytial pattern is actually a uh, pattern where all these tumor cell clump together uh, and you don't see uh, in between you don't see from uh, uh, significant uh, cytoplasm in between so this is a characteristic sensitive pattern you, you you really cannot see much of the cytoplasm that's why if you look later on under microscope it is bluish because the cytoplasm is minimal so it is clumped together bluish and characteristically it also have this intervening rich in lymphocytes okay again you can see uh, this in higher magnification you can see lymphoepithelial lesion uh, you can see the clumping together of the cells you don't see much of the cytoplasm and in between you have uh, area rich in <coughs> lymphocytes so that's why it is also called lymphoepithelial tumor so this is actually a nasopharyngeal carcinoma undifferentiated so this is uh, uh, usually in clinical term we call it npc lah, nasopharyngeal carcinoma it is actually uh, quite aggressive uh, malignancy and usually it is uh, it can be fatal uh, but usually it is uh, radio sensitive uh, if treated early okay so we move on to our last cases uh, a 65 year old gen uh, gentleman presented with hoarseness of voice so uh, again <clears throat> i think you all need to uh, apart from the histology i think more importantly in this practical i want you to learn the how to describe the lesion macroscopically means by your naked eye you don't need to see microscope so these are the lesion uh, these are the larynx uh, which uh, excise from the patient so as you can see in this larynx you can see this is uh, there is a ulcerated mass here you can see there is ulcer uh, <clears throat> is uh, the ulcer is actually heaped up means the border of the ulcer is raised uh, and then the ulcer you have uh, the base of the ulcer you have this uh, blood clot and you have this granulation tissue in between and of course this uh, also is very irregular you can see here here is a bit semicircle here is like a s shape also then you have the and it is infiltrating uh, the whole area to the supraglottic extending uh, into the glottic region and then here also it affects the piriform fossa here so it's actually quite extensive tumor uh, basically it affects the supraglottic and glottic region 
basically it is uh, prominently uh, on <clears throat> on the on the left side uh, which extend to the right as well okay so when you we uh, when we uh, section the tumor this is how it looks like under the microscope so you can see there is a nest and cots of uh, there's a tumor arranged in nest and cots you can see this is uh, cots of the tumor and some arranged in nest it's like a nest nesting pattern and then you can see uh, it is uh, if you look under higher magnification you can see it is pleomorphic means uh, the cells some are small some are large some are hyperchromatic then some has prominent nucleoli you can see nucleoli here and some has uh, abundant and this tumor actually has a lot abundant mitosis you can see mitosis here one two and you see this is a typical uh, this is a atypical mitosis is a textbook stuff so this is how atypical mitosis looks like means when you see this type of mitosis is almost always malignant so again uh, in well differentiated uh, this kind of tumor if it is well differentiated you have this uh, individualized keratinization means uh, within the cytoplasm you have this pinkish uh, pinkish uh, area pink, pinkish pigments and of course if you look uh, in between the cell you have this intercellular bridges and sometimes you have this keratin pearl formation it's like this this is the keratin pearl formation this is uh this is how it looks like the intercellular bridges you can see the cytoplasm is uh, pinkish and of course in between here you can see it's like a uh, it's like a starfish uh, leg you can see in between the cell it's like a starfish leg this is what we call intercellular bridges and uh, you can see of course this is a keratin pearl formation this is a, a typical squamous cell carcinoma of larynx uh, which is well differentiated because you can see this uh, keratin pearl formation so i think uh, that's all for our practical uh, briefing so <clears throat> please uh, watch this video before you go for the your practical and of course during practical uh, please scan your qr code in the smart v3 uh, to record your attendance as well uh, okay uh, that's all from me thank you very much and uh, have a good day